come across a case which I think um, reiterates a very deep problem that the United States has. I was actually going to make a video on the subject anyway, um, and then this case came up on my newsfeed on Facebook. Um, it's appalling. Uh, I'm going to read out a bit of the report from, from the BBC, but it's being reported in numerous other sources. And this involves the Loveland Police Department in Colorado. So um, uh, I'll read out a good bit of the report, maybe not all of it. I'll put a link as always. Um, the only reason I won't read out the whole report is it's quite long and I want to get to the point of this video. Uh, US police officers are seen mocking a 73-year-old woman with dementia as they watch video of her shoulder going pop during forcible arrest, according to footage released by her lawyer. Karen Garner was detained on the 26th of June last year. This has taken almost a year for this to come through after she walked out of a Walmart store in the state of Colorado without paying for $13 of items. Her elbow was fractured and shoulder dislocated, says her lawyer. An investigation has been launched into the Loveland Police Department arrest. In the footage released on Monday from the booking area of the police station on the day of the arrest, Officers have seen fist bumping one, an one another as we review body camera video of the incident. And I've just watched that. that they they're clearly think it's a big laugh. Video from inside, Miss Garner's nearby holding cell shows the frail looking grandmother slumped handcuffed to a bench while the officers joke about the incident, says her lawyer. Ready for the pop? Hear the pop, one of the officers said at one point, referring to Miss Garner's shoulder. As they continue to watch the footage, the same officer says, I love it. Um, the Garner family hired a sound engineer to enhance audio of the officer's remarks. Their lawyer has filed a federal lawsuit against the department, alleging the officers violated the Americans with Disabilities Act and violently assaulted Ms. Garner. Uh, attorney Sarah Schiekel, or Schil Schilke says her client went six hours without medical help while confused and crying in pain after an arrest that amounted to torture. And that's verbatim, that's what the lawyer's saying. They failed Karen Garner, Miss uh, Shilka said in a press release. They failed the community and they did it all on camera. Uh, I, may, I may as well just read the end of this, it's not too long. Loveland Police said in a statement on Monday that they would not be making any comment pending results of a criminal investigation launched last week. The Dharma County District Attorney is looking into the department's use of force during Ms. Garner's arrest. Loveland Police Chief Robert Tyser has played full transparency with the inquiry, which will be led by Fort Collins Police, being led by another uh, department. One officer has been placed on administrative leave and two others moved to administrative duties. Again, that raises major question marks. Why haven't they been arrested? I mean, the officer responsible. The body cam footage caused public outcry when it was released earlier this month. It showed two police officers stopping Miss Garner as she was picking flowers by the roadside after she left a Walmart store in the town of Loveland, about 50 miles north of Denver. CCTV from the supermarket shortly beforehand showed members of staff stopping Miss Garner to recover the $13.38 of merchandise, which included cans of fizzy drinks and laundry detergent. After she walks away from the officer, she is thrown to the ground, handcuffed, shoved face down on the bonnet of the police car, and has her legs tied together with a hobble. She was left bleeding. Miss Garner's daughter-in-law, Shannon Stewart, told the Denver Post the arrests are worse than missing Garner's dementia. She hasn't come back the way she was before, Miss Stewart told the newspaper it was too much. The release of the footage comes amid a nationwide reckoning over police brutality, especially against African Americans. Although Miss Garner is white, that's that's one thing to point out in this case. The victim here is a white woman, um, which reiterates, I, I think, that the issue of American police brutality affects everyone. I do think it probably is disproportionate to African-American people, but um, this is not a case that white people are immune from it. Um, and this case proves it. But, you know... Um, the 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 police chief of that department is probably saying what he all he can say. However, if that was regular citizens, they wouldn't be on desk duty or on administrative leave pending an inquiry. They would be arrested immediately. You know, you can arrest someone without um 
without then the sentencing process following on top of that, arrest them on suspicion of something. So I'd like to know why the officer responsible hasn't been arrested. Uh, just looking at their Facebook page, just bombarded with angry messages, understandably. But bear in mind, this happened in June last year. It's only coming out now. So um, it's, you, you know, what's actually more troubling than the assault itself, and that's what it is, um, is the desensitised way the other officers were laughing about it. It's a little bit like in some war zones, soldiers get desensitised. And, uh, you know, when you get abusive detainees and so on, like the Abu Ghraib um, scandal in Iraq. Um, I think that America has a severe problem. And it's not good enough to say, oh, it's not every cop. There are good cops as well. And uh, don't judge all as one. That, that's true. But there is clearly a serious problem here. And I do think it is worse than other developed nations. It's not that Britain's immune from it. We have had incidents of officers abusing their power. I remember an incident that um, from Cheshire Police, I made a video about it about 10 years ago now, uh, where officers threw a woman into a holding cell. Um, here's the thing, you know, um, police have a very difficult job. They're tasked with enforcing the law uh, and order. But when they abuse their position in this way, what does that do? It destroys public trust, especially when we're talking about a 73-year-old unarmed woman with dementia. This wasn't some gang member. This wasn't a dangerous individual. This was a 73-year-old woman with dementia. Um, and the officer doing it, you could tell in the tone of his voice that he was taking pleasure from this. As far as I'm concerned, he's a piece of shit and he needs to be behind bars for assault or whatever the penalty for assault in the state of Colorado is. He should not, one, one thing that I think has come out of all of this, um, and I'm not just talking about this incident, talking about the George Floyd case and, and other such examples, is this odious idea of qualified immunity. To me, that really, really needs to go, because so long as that is there, there's a strong possibility that police officers will be above the law. That's abhorrent. And it actually is a hallmark of a police state. Now, I don't unsay anything I've said about Black Lives Matter. I still remain pretty sceptical of that organisation and movement. However, um, I've always accepted how it came about. I've always accepted that there is things that go on in the United States um, that are indefensible. Uh, and there are examples of black men um, Dying at police hands is utterly inexcusable. George Floyd's, of course, the best known example, but Eric Garner was another high profile case. I mean, I was outraged at the way Eric, that Eric Garner case was treated. There you had a black man um, who, again, couldn't breathe. Uh, he died in police hands, and the officer responsible was acquitted. Um, this is not to say that every incident is the same. There will be cases that are not black and white. Um, no pun intended, you know, where there is, um, there are mitigating factors, maybe a suspect was aggressive, maybe a suspect uh, did have a violent criminal history. There, there's a lot of factors like that. But one thing that is coming out is that clearly there is a problem in, in America with police being paramilitarized, excessive. And so many of these killings have happened apparently at, you know, routine traffic stops. I mean, one does have to ask, why is it always lethal force? Or why is it always excessive force? It's proportionate. So, um, you know, why not, in the case of the girl in Columbus, why not use a taser to subdue her? But I, again, you know, each case needs to be looked at in its own merit. But there was another case, I believe, I don't think it was Colorado, but it was somewhere out in the mountain region, where a police officer... Um, punch an old man after um, just um, there is too many cases like this it just happens far too frequently and um, I think it's abhorrent it's an abhorrent abuse of power and those Americans who are 
you know, they're angry about Black Lives Matter, they're angry about all the identity politics and all of that, and the riots and looting. I, I understand that. They also need to accept that there is a problem with the police. And for decent cops who don't behave this way, it's not good enough to just say, oh, don't judge it, don't tar us with the same brush. They need to speak up and say, we have to stop protecting our own. You know, if a police officer abuses his or her power, it's not good enough to just put them on desk duty. They need to be arrested, like anyone else. I mean, like I say, this country isn't perfect, but I do think um, America is has a particularly bad problem with this. Because in the end of the day, police officers are in a position of authority and power, and they're meant to be the people upholding justice. They're meant to be the people setting an example. So when they behave like thugs, and they behave in this sort of way, it just raises far too many questions about the police community relationship. And race does, uh, you know, when that comes into the mix, it obviously inflames things. Although I do think that... Um, some of the narrative the BLM has put out isn't helpful. Um, I mean, in this incident, the victim was white. So I personally think it's more an issue of how police are trained than racism. Um, I think too many cops think that wearing a uniform gives them a right to do what they want. Um, I'm not saying there isn't racism in the police, by the way. I'm not saying there won't be officers who do have racist inclinations because they probably will. Uh, also, I understand that state to state, even department to department, there's different training techniques, but I don't see why any police force in the world's biggest economy in the year 2021 shouldn't have training techniques that are just reasonable, common sense um, ways of ensuring that the police don't abuse a bar. So I think that a case like this needs to really scrutinize how police are trained. How is it that this guy got through the cracks to think he could behave that way? How is it that his peers um, thought there was something funny about that? That to me says it's a desensitized culture in that particular department. But this is not unique. It's happened far too much in too many police departments in every state in the union, probably. So, it needs to be a wake-up call. Things need to change. With the Derek Chauvin verdict, I think one thing that came out is this odious idea of qualified immunity. It needs to go. If police in America want to retain public trust, they need to accept that something that qualified immunity just gets in the way of that. It sends out a message, we're enforcing the law, but we're, we're above the law. We can do what we want. That's abhorrent. And, you know, I, I totally get it. They face dangerous situations. There are circumstances where use of force is justified. But there are too, too many examples like this as well, where use of force and excess and brutality is both unjustified and morally reprehensible. I mean, that is the ingredients of a police state by definition. When you have the police acting in that way, like a law unto themselves. Um, so in that case, what should have happened was, okay, the woman had apparently left without paying $13 or something. They should have assessed the situation. And frankly, I do think British police would be a lot more professional. They would read between the lines. They would work out that there's something wrong with her. Um, you know, they might not have been able to tell immediately that she had dementia, but she's clearly frail, an older woman. You know, that needs to be taken into account. I'm not saying it would be okay if it was a 35-year-old young man. But there is a common sense factor at play as well. And, you know, it makes you wonder what sort of officer that is. Because he wasn't doing it because he felt he had to. Clearly, he was deriving pleasure from it. If you listen to the audio, it's it's very troubling. And, yeah, the the whole thing needs to be looked at. All the context around it but frankly I don't see any way I don't see any rationale that would justify that behavior she wasn't being violent she wasn't armed um, and it's disgusting and that police force deserves all the heat it gets over this if they really want to uh, you know it shouldn't take an incident like this and it shouldn't take 
um, the news and public outrage to bring awareness of it, they should have the training correct in the first place. It shouldn't have taken this long for it to get attention. And that's another reason, incidentally, why maybe, maybe mandatory body cams need to be worn. I've heard people say, oh, well, it's more bureaucracy, it means more. But here's the thing, having body cams available, and there was in this case, is actually beneficial uh, to all parties concerned because victims of police brutality can get the transparency to then get justice, hopefully. But the police themselves, if there is a situation where they have been threatened and there is a suspect who has uh, threatened them or threatened others, then body cam or footage will show that. And then the police can say, well, look, we were acting out of necessity. So it's actually in their interest as well. And I can't really understand any argument against that. But to be honest, when I look at stuff like this, I'm so pleased I don't live in the States. Um, this country has plenty of problems, but I do think police brutality is a particularly... I'm not going to say it's unique to America, but that isn't true. But among developed countries, I do feel that the United States has a particular problem of paramilitarized police and desensitized police. And the main thing that comes out of this is how are they trained? What is the culture in these forces that creates officers who think they could behave this way? That needs to be scrutinised. I'll put a link to the report and I think it includes the video. Thanks for watching.